What is up, Interneters? It is I, the one and only Ninja Nick. Uh, back with another round, round three of day two of the Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships. We have Azul Garcia Griego, arguably one of the best players in the game, versus Sajin Park, one of the best players of Pokemon, period. He's had invitations to the World Championships in the video game, in the trading card game, in Pokemon Unite, in Pokémon Tournament, and in Pokemon Go, the only player in history to be able to qualify for every single World Championships category and has won the World Championships in VGC, most famously with the use of Follow Me Pachirisu, just because it's his favorite Pokemon. He does, if I do remember this match correctly, I did watch this before uh, live, and he does have a Pachirisu plushie on the side, giving him good luck. So, Seijin is very much a fan of this Maridon deck. I think he just likes the uh, pure aggression that it gives. It is a very... Uh it is a very straightforward deck, but it can just hit really hard really fast sometimes. I'm still trying to catch this fly that's been bothering me. I keep thinking I catch it, and then it comes back. Uh, Azul's entire group uh, has been on this Mew deck for this tournament, all of them getting Day 2 invitations, not having to play Day 1. And it looks like Azul is at 2-0, as well as Seijin, of course. So we are trying to see who is going to go to 3-0 at this point. We do see the Squawkabilly being benched here for Seijin. Squawkabilly EX, on your first turn of the game, allows you to discard your hand and draw 6. It looks like we are going to discard Research and Boss and a Lightning Energy as well. The Lightning Energy being in the discard is actually pretty good if you are on the Flaffy version of Maridon. The one that we saw in Day 1 being played was just kind of like a Turbo Maridon Raikou deck. And uh, this one is, uh, is just more of just like a standard version because it has the Flaffies. So it can use Raichu, e uh, Raichu V which has a very similar attack attack to the Chien Pao EX, where you discard Lightning Energy from your board and do 60 damage for each one. So you can use the Flaffies in combination with the Electric Generator to get a whole bunch of energy onto your board in order to be able to take those uh, clean knockouts like that with the Raichu late game. So, I would say it's a little bit more of a consistent version of the Palkia deck, but with a little bit of a lower damage output. The Palkia um, can hit for higher numbers. It does 60 plus 20 for each bench Pokemon on both players' boards, but it also uses the Chien Pao as a cleanup attacker towards the late game. Uh, this deck kind of plays the same way, but instead of having to rely on Melanie, it relies on the Flaffies that are in play. So, Azul is going to open up with this Battle VIP Pass. Is going to search out two Genesects. That way he can uh, be able to draw some cards. It almost looked like Azul got like a warning for something, but he definitely didn't even do anything yet. He's in his first deck search. And he has not taken too much time yet. But definitely checking his prize cards to make sure what energies and Pokemon he has available to him this game before he has to at least draw them from his prize cards. And there you see Seijun's Pachirisu wiggling his finger there. If you watch the VGC stream, they just almost will not stop talking about Pachirisu. It's actually kind of annoying. Like, I say it because this is the first time Seijin's been on stream. And if he's on stream again, I'll probably mention it. But if he's not on camera, I'm not talking about it. But in VGC, Seijin's not even playing VGC this year. He chose to play TCG instead. And the entire VGC stream is just like, Oh, Pachirisu this, Pachirisu that! Like, calm down, guys. It's It was 2014. It's been nine years. <laughs> Though I suppose Ferrigiraf, I don't know if it won, at least made the finals. And Ferrigiraf is not a very common pick. Uh, 
I think it's really good, but only in, like, very niche situations. But it managed to get finals or or first place. I'm not sure. I didn't actually get to the finals yet. I haven't seen it. I just know that it got there. I think Sajin actually, when he cut the deck, I think he put the top part upside down. So I think Azul's deck is half one direction, half the other. So Azul just filling up his bench as Mew decks tend to do. He's going to play that Lost City to replace the stadium of his opponents. Uh, just to draw one extra card with the Genesec. Gets an Ultra Ball exactly off of that, which is really cool to see. Uh, that is pretty great because now he can find one more bench Pokemon. Probably either Meloetta or Mew V would make the most sense. Uh, I don't think you necessarily want the Ice Q unless uh, unless it's prized. And yeah, we are finding out that the deck is half one way and half the other. Looks like we are maybe going for the Ice Q instead. Uh, the Ice Q could allow your Mew VMAXs to attack the Flaffies on the bench to make it so that the Raichu play is never an option. Although, I personally do prefer the Meloetta just for the damage output on active Pokemon, but uh, Azul definitely knows what he's doing better than I do. Uh, I've certainly played him before, and it has not been a close match. I played him at an ARG Circuit Series the day after an ARG Invitational when we both, we both scrubbed out of the Invitational. He was playing Drompa Guard, and I was playing Gardevoir GX. Uh, it was the first uh, tournament that Gardevoir GX was actually ever legal for, I think. And, uh, he, I, I told him that he viciously outplayed me, was my exact choice of words. Uh, he was knocking off my, uh, double colorless with enhanced hammer. He was, uh, he was using a trubbish with a choice belt, a uh, choice band to do 40 damage to my active and flipping heads to knock off an energy and he was looping, uh, he was using Palpad along with, uh, double Lele to loop Acerolas every turn. So I would hit into his Lele for not, an, for a two shot. Then he would just pick it up and hit with the next Lele to two shot my Gardevoirs. And it was, it was a rough time, man. It was, it was a really rough time. Looks like we were actually going for the Psychic Leap this turn with the Mew V. Um, so this could be very easily punished if Seijin is able to uh, go for the knockout on the Mew V on the bench because then Azul is not going to have a follow-up Mew attacker. Uh, but being able to t take a prize card on the first turn is pretty cool here. So the reason he chose the Ice Q is because it's the most expendable Pokemon. He wants to be able to let that get knocked out by a Maridon or a Raikou this turn. But if Seijin is just able to maybe play an Escape Rope or a Boss's Orders, we could see a uh, a lot of damage going down to another Pokemon. And that nice Law Zone counter gets updated there. Pokemon zooming in on the Pachirisu. Yes, we know. It is Pachirisu. He's got them cheek pouches. Those chubby cheeks. Actually, I have a question for you guys. Down in the comments down below, you can let me know because, of course, as always, it's very important to comment, like, and subscribe because it's great for the YouTube algorithm. But let me know what your, fa what your favorite, like, Pikachu is. Like, your Pikachu, Pikachu clone with the chubby cheeks, the chubby electric cheeks. Which, which is your favorite? Uh, so, I would have to say Raichu, personally. I think Pikachu is a bit overrated. Uh, I understand why people like it so much. It's the mascot of Pokemon, but I think they kind of just shove it down your throat too much. So I like Raichu. He is chunky. Uh, he looks like he is the kind of Pokemon that you could rub his belly. Um, I'd say maybe after that, maybe Dedene, because he's also chunky. I just like chunky Pokemon sometimes. I don't know. They're adorable if they look like they can have a rubbable belly, okay? <laughs> Is that why I like Ampharos too? I'm thinking about all my favorite lightning Pokemon now, and like I'm thinking of Ampharos and he's just got a pot belly as well. <laughs> oh no. I have a type, guys. At least for Pokemon. And it's electric types with big bellies. 
All right, so we have an electric generator here. We also have the uh, Raichu V in hand. Uh, well, actually, we already put one into play, so we don't necessarily need that one. It would be nice to hit a couple of energies off this electric generator here. It looks like we just hit one, so we could put that to the Raikou. Looks like we we're going to put it to the Raichu instead. Yeah, I think putting it to the Raikou is correct because you could attach return and attack this turn with it. But then again, I think you want to go for a big knockout on a Mew. So you're probably digging for the boss's orders. But I think he already played research this turn because he drew quite a few cards. Uh, Seijin also has that Zapdos, much like these Articuno we saw in the last game. The Pokemon Go, Articuno, and Zapdos, and Moltres all boost the damage output of Pokemon of that type by 10. So the Zapdos boosts Lightning Pokemon's damage by 10. Uh, so it's really great to see, as well as being a bench Pokemon, uh, that allows Raikou to do an extra 20 damage for each bench Pokemon. So... Uh, actually being an extra 30 by itself is really cool to see. And it looks like we are just going to go into our Raikou, use the Fleet Footed to draw an extra card. And uh, we do get another Electric Generator. Maybe if we see Escape Rope, we could take a Knockout with the... Or no, because we retreated the one energy off of our active because our opponent replaced our Stadium. Yeah, so we no longer have the the beach court in play so our pokemon do not have free retreat they do not have their retreat cost reduced by 10. so it looks like we are going to attach one from the electric generator to the uh to the zapdos uh, a bit of an interesting decision to have the lightning energy there instead of maybe on the Maridon, but I suppose it's not likely that Azul is going to boss up and knock out the Zapdos at any point, and it could allow him to uh, potentially pivot the Zapdos. If it ever gets locked in the active, he could attach and retreat it, and it also allows that one energy to be safe for if Seijin wants to attack with a Raichu on a future turn. That's an extra 60 damage that will just stay on the board and not be, um, not be on a two-prizer that's likely going to get knocked out, so... Uh, that's a very interesting and skilled play there from Seijin. Uh, looks like Azul is going to go for the Nest Ball. We're going to be able to find ourselves another basic Pokemon. Probably a Mew V, I would assume. Or the Meloetta, it looks like we're going for instead. Makes a lot of sense. If you have a Fusion Strike energy, uh, you could attach for turn to it. And then Elisa's Sparkle uh, in order to get an extra s uh, Fusion Strike energy onto both the Meloetta and the Active Mew that already has one on it. Uh, and then you could attack with either of those Pokemon for Melodious Echo for 280. Uh, I think it would be safer to attack with the Meloetta because then you're forcing your opponent into a potential uh, eight prize game where they have to take two prizes and then on single prize Pokemon and then they have to knock out two Mew V Maxes. But Seijin, as they're showing on the screen right uh, behind me, uh, is playing Drapion. So. Uh, if Seijin can replace this Lost City and not have another one come down, uh, he might be able to use the Drapion at least once, maybe twice if he plays Super Rod and the Stadium's no longer in play. So we'll have to see exactly what he can do here with that. Uh, here comes the Elisa Sparkle. We are going to be able to search our deck for two Fusion Strike energies. Have we prized any? It looks like no, we have not. So we're going to attach one to Active, one to the Meloetta. And then we have another one in hand we can attach either to the Meloetta or maybe to one of our Genesects or the other Mew on the bench. Uh, whatever uh, is our preference. We're going to pal pad back in a boss's orders as well. Uh, so that maybe we can draw into that on the next turn would be really great. We can take two prizes off this active knockout. And then on the next turn boss up another two prizer if maybe we see the attack with the uh, one of the one prizers instead. Uh, Azul will also need only one prize card at some point uh, because he did take a one prize knockout on the Flaffy turn one. Uh, looks like we got a choice belt on the bench one. That will allow him to do extra damage to the Pokemon uh, V, the Raikou, uh, Raikou and the Raichu. 
Um, but unfortunately, not going to do anything against the Maridon. Well, Maridon is going to go to the Lost Zone because of that Lost Cities uh, ability there, the Stadium card. Uh, any card that any Pokemon that is knocked out goes to the Lost Zone. And by Pokemon, the definition of Pokemon is the pile. So any uh, pre evolutions that are underneath it are also considered the Pokemon. There are some cards that allow you to use attacks from the Pokemon below it, and that's why they're all considered one Pokemon. Also, these Pokemon, like, grow. They evolve. So, to say that each card is a separate card at that point is uh, not canonically correct, I suppose. Although, uh, if they become something that's no longer a Pokemon... Anthony Kelly... Uh, uh, they, they are considered separate cards again. So, like, when Shedinja, who had an ability where he could attach himself as a tool card, and you would put that on a, uh, skip loom that can lost zone itself, uh, in order to find a jump off from your deck to put into play, uh, in the lost march deck, um, the, uh, the save, the Shedinja is the tool card, and the Ninkata falls off, because it's, it can't, they can't both be the one tool card. Um, and I was given an incorrect judge ruling, and he was able to hit my Blacephalon for exact knockout instead of 20 less, and losing me the League Cup, and I'm still salty about that. <laughs> that, that was in the 2019 season. And that 10 points really did matter. Uh, if I had gotten that 10 points, I would have been able to get my last points off of just friends scooping to me in a league cup because none of the points mattered for any of us because of where we were for our invites that year i think two two of them already had invites and then uh me and the other guy that were in top four both needed like like 50 points or something it was like 40 or 50 points and off of winning the league cup uh we would not have gotten to that number like the difference between 32 and 50 didn't make a difference. But if I had that 10 from that one League Cup, it would have. Or no, that was 2018. Yeah, that was 2018 because then I missed that season. Right? No. No, it was 2019. And then I got my invite off of NAIC. God, I played Pokemon for so many years now. They're all blurring together. Yeah, so basically I had to get my invite off of NAIC instead of that cup that I got top four at. So I could have had two wins instead of a second in a top four. So we're going for an Arvin here. Uh, our active Pokemon was knocked out by the Meloetta, so now Seijin is going to try to have to find his way around this Meloetta, potentially, if he wants to stay ahead in the prize trade, or at least even in the prize trade. And, uh, yeah, this seems like it's a pretty bad matchup for Seijin, but as long as he's able to find his Drapion after this next knockout. So, I'd like to see, uh, the Escape Rope play. So, yeah, he is choosing to find the Forest Seal Stone and the Escape Rope off of the Arvin. He can use that Forest Seal Stone to search out any one card if he needs to. Uh, I think you might actually just put it onto a V Pokemon and let it sit there for a turn. Uh, in case you get, like, Judged or Ionoed out of the Drapion, then you have it for the next turn. I also think that you don't replace the Stadium just yet, even if you did have another Stadium. But uh, this Escape Rope will force one of the two prizers up here for Azul. Uh, that will be able to be knocked out by any one of Seijin's attackers. Uh, looks like the Raikou is the only one loaded up. It does only require two energy, and it's hitting 220 right now. So we're going to just knock out this Mew V this turn. We're going to put the Forest Seal Stone to the Raichu on the bench. And the, oh, the uh, Bravery Charm, it's called, to the active Raikou. That gives it an extra 50 HP, making it a little bit harder for Azul to be able to knock out. So I think if you're Azul, you need to knock out the, uh, yeah, you need to knock out the Raichu this turn, but also play like I know. <laughs> and I don't think you can do both because you need to boss to bring up that. Uh, yeah, you need to boss to bring up that Raichu. And Seijin already has exactly what he needs in hand to be able to win this game. That uh, that Drapion. So 
We might actually see Azul not go for the evolution into the Mew VMAX this turn. Knowing that Seijun could potentially go for the Drapion. So maybe boss up the Raichu this turn, knock it out with the Meloetta, and then on the next turn, Iono Seijun to two if he goes for another escape rope play. Uh, a lost vacuum for the Raichu would also be pretty good here as well. Um, but he might have to lost vacuum the active in order to get the knockout. So we'll just have to see exactly where we get to here. Uh, but we're definitely going to be wanting to attack with uh, Melodious Echo this turn. So definitely with the uh, with the uh, with the Meloetta specifically. And yes, Azul very. Uh, knowing exactly what is potentially coming from Seijin, not evolving into the VMAX. He hasn't even seen a Drapion from Seijin yet, but he knows. Uh, yeah, even the casters from the official stream are pointing out that the... If I can get my finger to point the right way. Are, are, uh, are even saying that Azul is specifically not evolving those Pokemon and has the four seal stones in play that have not yet been used so that he can find the Mew VMAX at any point if he needs to and uh, is not afraid of the Drapion so much. And it looks like Seijin's gonna scoop here because he knows uh, Azul did not evolve, got so much value out of that one Meloetta. Uh, he's just actually gonna take the game from there. Yeah, Seijin having that Drapion in hand the whole time and not able to really utilize it to its full power. Yeah, Seijin could have... Yeah, I don't know. Seijin could have still taken a knockout there and just hoped that maybe Azul didn't get another knockout on the next turn. But yeah, he he had the checkmate with the Forest Seal Stone to be able to find the Mew Max to take the last knockout, so... Yeah, Seijin definitely having to scoop there, and we just go on to the next game, so let me see if I can fast forward this here. Gotta click on the video twice, because otherwise it messes with my music instead. We don't need the replay, we just lived it. So, Azul 1-0 and currently against the 2014 VGC World Champion. And uh, the current national champion of Korea, uh, I believe, as well. Oh, yeah, I remember this. So, Azul ripped a sleeve, and it takes them, like, 10 minutes to find him a new sleeve. So, we're just gonna keep skipping ahead until we find a sleeve. They, they eventually bring him his backpack so he can find a sleeve out of that, but he doesn't have any spare sleeves, so he has to re-sleeve his entire deck. <laughs> So obviously they get a time extension for this. We're just going to show the crowd. Everybody's waving. Hi. Uh, we're going to take some time to realign, you know, like the um, like the Drake and Josh theme song. And uh, now we're going to get into the game in a second. <laughs> there we go. Uh, nothing too relevant for either player uh, in the prize cards. Uh, I guess two energy for Seijin might matter, but th I mean, they usually play like 13, 14 energy in the deck, so shouldn't matter too much. It would just be a little more helpful if they were all in the deck so that the electric generators are as live as possible. So uh, Azul going to go for the Feather Ball turn one here. He's going to be identifying what energies and Pokemon he has in his deck here by sorting them to the front or back of the deck. So, d what did he prize for Pokemon? What did he prize for energy? Uh, he is uh, very aware of that right now. So, gonna use that Feather Ball to search out a Pokemon that has a free retreat cost, which is that Mew V. Gonna use a second Feather Ball here, likely searching for a second Mew V as well. As well, doing some math in his head. And yep, gonna get that second Mew V. So we're gonna bench that one. Probably bench the other one as well would make a lot of sense. I don't see any reason why not to. Okay, I guess he's not benching it quite yet.
Right, so we are going for, I think that's a battle VIP pass. Looks like we're playing around with the lighting again. Uh, putting our players in the dark. Uh, just like the locals I just went to where it's in the middle of a mall and they shut the lights out during round the final round of, of the Swiss. Uh, it was a winner box tournament and I, I won. I already talked about it in a previous video. I pulled a uh, full art Charizard in the secret rare fire energy and a full art Pidge uh, Pidgeotto or Pidgeot as well. It's pretty sweet. I also pulled two Frokies. Yeah, here's a full art Pidgeot. Did you guys know that this is like a dollar cheaper than the regular art right now? Fun fact. Or at least as of the time of recording, I'm sure that's going to change by the time this video goes out. It's going to be like a week and uh, secret rare fire energy. It's pretty cool. I got a Rev of Room EX. I actually think this card has potential because of that new uh, tool card. And yeah, Froakies in the set. I got two Froakies. If anybody sees me at a tournament and wants to give me one of these new Froakies, please, please do. I want as many of these as possible. I will sign your Froakies even if you want to keep them. I'll sign your Froakie. I love Froakie. I used to do that actually. I used to, I used to have a collection of X and Y base set Froakies. And I would just sign them and give them out, like, as business cards. I have actual business cards now, but the V-Star markers. So, Azul, just doing uh, just doing Azul things. Uh, just uh, putting some energy into play. Attaching to a Mew. Uh, using Elisa Sparkle to get some more energy into play as well. Looks like Seijin must have... Oh, no. I thought Sajin chose to go second, but no, he chose to go first. Just attaches to the Zapdos and passes. That is an awful start there from Sajin. Not having pretty much anything in hand. It looks like maybe there is a supporter of some sort in there. It looks like there is a boss's orders and something else. Is that a penny? Oh, no. Those are not good cards to have. Yeah, even if he went second, he wouldn't have been able to play any sort of supporter besides boss's orders to just bring up a Genesect. So now Azul is trying to go as hard as... Po oh no! Azul went first. Sajin went second. Passes. And now Azul finds the Mew VMAX already. Now he just needs to be able to retreat his Pokemon here. He needs to find a switching card of some sort. I guess if he whiffs it, you know, that gives Sajin one turn to find an out, but with his hand, he still can't do it. Uh, and he, uh, yep, he finds the double turbo energy to retreat his Genesect and ends up winning the game. Wow, that was crazy. I completely forgot that round, I forgot, completely missed that, uh, turn one and two happened, basically. Uh, because of, uh, because of my story time, but I apologize, guys. So, as always, guys, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, yeah, basically just, uh, Seijin bricked and passed, and then Azul, who went first, uh, ends up getting the Mew v Max knock out the only basic. That's really all that that game came down to. So, yeah, Azul ends up winning, uh, 2-0 against the BGC World Champion. And, uh, Azul, uh, does show his power... Uh, he is uh, pretty okay at the TCG, I would say. So uh, we will see you guys next time for round four of day two of the Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships.